welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the progress of the LRT1 Cavite Extension Project. Our road safety reminder in the Young Street Smart Sports and Centers on rules regarding traffic lights. This week's Spying to Pet shall be about the illegal practice of most PUV drivers of overloading passengers. The public service segment centers on bumps on the Edsa busway. Showcase this week shall have the 4x4 pickup from Toyota, the Hilux Conquest 4x4 automatic. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition. So you too can race yours. The Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. The Light Rail Manila Corporation has just completed the civil works for the expansion of the Baclaran Depot. Civil works for the LRT1 Baclaran Expansion Depot has been completed and an inauguration ceremony was held attended by officials from the Transport Department, the Light Rail Transit Authority, the Embassy of Japan, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, and the Pasay City Local Government. LRT1 Private Operator Light Rail Manila Corporation, or LRMC, said the expansion added 4.2 hectares to the existing 6.4 hectare Baclaran Depot. This move aims to add rail tracks and maintenance facilities to support train sets and operations of the LRT-1 and the LRT-1 Cavite extension. The Baclara Depot will have 21 stabling and maintenance tracks added to existing 45, increasing the depot's stabling capacity from 130 to 182 light rail vehicles or LRVs. The LRMC said work is being accelerated on electromechanical installations to allow stabling and maintenance of additional trains at the expanded depot. The expanded depot will be able to accommodate trains from existing generations 1, 2, and 3 and new generation 4 LRVs. 20 of the expected 30 Gen 4 train sets have already arrived in the Philippines. The new train sets are set to be deployed on the LRT-1 in mid-2022 after completing safety checks, inspections, test runs, and acceptance tests. They are also expected to be used for the LRT-1 Cavite extension which, as of January 2022, is already 69% complete. The Baclaran Depot is part of the LRT-1 Cavita extension, one of the many projects being undertaken to modernize the railway system in the country. Many people, including OFWs and seafarers, complain about the difficulty of renewing driver's licenses. A new licensure center should help. The LTO has opened a new licensing center at a very convenient location, the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange or PITX. The LTO expects the new PITX licensing center should make it easier for drivers at the southern end of the Metro Manila and nearby provinces to renew their licenses. The new licensing center is a one-stop LTO satellite office where drivers can register with the Land Transportation Management System, apply for new licenses, renew expiring ones, or get student permits. 
it also has a test drive facility. During the inauguration of the LTOPITX Licensing Center, Transportation Secretary Art Lugade particularly cited how it can benefit overseas Filipino workers and seafarers with limited time to renew licenses. This is especially true for those from Region 4A or the provinces of Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Rizal, and Quezon, he said. Secretary Tugade said licenses can be renewed in just 30 minutes at the new licensing center. The PITX Licensing Center is being touted as the LTO, bringing public service closer to the people. It can also be seen as the agency's success at digitizing its processes for greater efficiency. Motorists should be aware that the annual maintenance work on the NLEX and the SETEX has already begun. NLEX Corporation has announced that it's maintenance work on both the NLEX and the SC Tex. The maintenance work is conducted annually and this year it will cover 79,063 square meters of the NLEX and 18,718 square meters of the SC Tex. Stretches of pavement from Balintawak to Santa Ines and Tarlac to Tipo will be replaced in sections and overlaid with new layers of asphalt. While some stretches of pavement with minimal damage will only undergo patching work, Alex says the pavement repair program will be undertaken with traffic and lane management measures in place to ensure minimal lane closures. Road signs and warning devices will be installed to guide motorists passing the repair sites. Alex urged motorists to check out its social media accounts to learn when and where the repair work will be undertaken to help them plan their trips. Motorists can also call the Alex hotline 135000. Tollways like the NLEX and the SETEX have made motoring outside of Metro Manila all the more convenient, safe, and enjoyable. And much of it is thanks to making sure that expressways are well maintained. There is more to the opening of the LTO Candon District Office than just about licensing and registration of motor vehicles. The LTO Candon District Office has begun serving drivers and motor vehicle owners in Ilocosur. During the inauguration ceremony of one of the newest district offices of the LTO, Transportation Secretary Artogad encouraged its staff and rank and file to always observe discipline and to render honest and efficient public service. He urged them to cut processing time, avoid corruption, and to be punctual always. Kandon City Mayor Erickson Singson said that from the start, the establishment of the LTO Kandon aided efforts of the city to grow the local economy, provide more business opportunities, encourage capital inflow, and more investments. He said that with the need for speedy recovery from the effects of the pandemic, the operation of LTO Kandon along with related services provided by the private sector would help spur growth. Some people believe that the LTO is among government agencies that have performed well amidst the challenges of a deadly contagion. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The viaduct for Phase 1 of the LRT1 Cavite Extension Project has been completed. The significance of this achievement and what happens next is discussed here on Motoring Forum. The viaduct for Phase 1 of the LRT-1 extension to Cavite is now in place. It has taken a bit of time, more than two decades in fact since extending the LRT-1 further south from the Platon and station toward Cavite was first proposed. But it was only in September 2019 that civil works for Phase 1 of the project has begun. The completion of the viaduct from the planned Dr. A. Santos station to the Redemptor station in Baclara, Paranaque City is a significant achievement as it sets the stage for the laying of rails and the installation of the electrical system for the light rail transit. With the viaduct complete, the construction of stations will also begin. Phase 1 of the LRT-1 Cavite Extension Project covers five stations from the Redemptor Station, Mia Station, Asia World Station, Nino Aquino Station, to the Dr. A. Santos Station. The completion of the viaduct was even more impressive as it was achieved under the many restrictions and challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Light Rail Manila Corporation or LRMC President and CEO Juan Alonso cited the support of various partners in the public and private sectors as well as the commitment and sacrifice of its teams for achieving the milestone. LRMC took over LRT-1 in 2015 and has since then invested 25 billion pesos to rehabilitate the existing system and begin the construction of the Cavite extension. The rehabilitation included upgrading to a brand new signaling system in preparation for using the fourth generation trains it has acquired. After witnessing the laying of the final span of the viaduct, Transportation Secretary Art Tugade said the project addresses the need for mobility, connectivity, and convenience for Cavite and southern parts of Metro Manila. 
Once fully operational, the LRT-1 Cavite extension project is expected to cut travel time between Baclaran and Bacoor, Cavite to just 25 minutes and increase the LRT-1's capacity from 500,000 to 800,000 passengers daily. There's a sense that the LRT-1 Cavite extension project will be completed and operational sooner rather than later, which is a good thing for commuters from Cavite and other parts down south of the metro. That's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Confident to the core. You are back with us here on Motoring Today. In line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. Isa sa mga pinakamahalagang traffic rules ay ang pagsunod sa traffic lights. Pag ikaw ay pedestrian or driver, you should always learn how to obey the traffic lights. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's spying to pair this week. Spying to pair lang, kaibigan. Ako si Jeffrey, isang kapwa niyo, Chuper. Huwag mong hayaang may sumabit sa likuran ng iyong jeep. Delikado ang may sabit sa jeep. Maaring pagmula nito ng aksidente at may masaktan o masawi. Kapag puno na sa loob at may gusto pang humabol, agad na pagbawalan upang disgrasya ay maiwasan. Tandaan, kaligtasan bago ang ano paman. Ito po si Jeffrey Hamot, payong Chuper lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa niyo, Chuper. Strata athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. We start with the latest news and developments. Automobile Association of Philippines or AAP has revived its Motorsport Development Program or MSDP this year with an FIA grant. According to AAP Motorsports Manager Ivan Esada, the MSDP this year aims to empower organizers, instructors, and drivers, strengthen them through new ways of teaching and coaching, and give them confidence in running their own local race competitions. AAP said it is confident that the MSDP can be revived in 2022, given the successful implementation of the AAP return to motorsport mantle last year and the government's continuous anti-COVID-19 vaccination program. Isa decided how race organizers in areas where the MSDP had been held before the pandemic were able to develop their own independent motorsport communities last year by strictly abiding by protocols of the manual and online guidelines from the AAP MSDP. The MSDP event was first held in Cebu last February 26 to 27 and in Iloilo on March 5 and 6. Up next on the MSDP 2022 calendar are Cagayan de Oro on March 12 to 13, Dava on March 19 to 20, and General Santos on March 26 to 27.
And that's this week's World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Suzuki Eltinga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Confident to the core. Welcome back to Modern Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. The Mazda MX-5 Club Edition is now available locally with a soft top. Mazda Philippines revealed this while announcing a fresh round of color and trim changes for the 2022 MX-5. This includes a new body color, Platinum Quartz Metallic, which features a silky white finish with quartz-like translucency. Buyers still have the option to personalize their MX-5 by using the Build Your MX-5 portal on Mazda's official site. There are 76 possible combinations for customizing the 2022 Mazda MX-5, which comes with either a 6-speed Sky Active Drive automatic or manual transmissions, and are available in soft top and retractable fastback body styles. Steven Tan, President and CEO of Mazda Philippines, says there is room to involve the driver even more to enhance their emotional bond with their car. Mazda is continuing to elevate this already unique driving experience with the introduction of new features and owner-initiated options. A new feature is the kinematic posture control, which Mazda says provides a more integrated and stable turning posture when cornering at high speeds. Kia Philippines is looking to inspire VIPs with the launch of the all-new Carnival. The all-new Carnival has been designed for VIPs looking for a modern executive family van, a grand utility vehicle offering space, luxurious comfort, and smart performance. Simon Kang, Coordinating Director of Product Planning at Kia Asia Pacific, describes the new Carnival as a top-of-the-line vehicle for executives and for family leisure, offering ample headroom, spacious and welcoming seats, and constructed with elegant materials. The all-new Carnival is offered only with two 7-seater variants, the SX and the EX, both powered by a new SmartStream 2.2 VGT CRDI engine made into an 8-speed automatic transmission. Available colors are Snow White Pearl, Aurora Black Pearl, and Astra Blue. Priced at 2.998 million pesos, the Carnival SX 880 is now available at Kia dealerships. The 2.5 million peso Carnival EX 880 is arriving this March. Toyota Motor Philippines has announced that the new RAV4 Hybrid has arrived equipped with exciting upgrades, including a hybrid electric vehicle system as well as Toyota Safety Sense. The new RAV4 HEV comes in two variants, the LTD and XLE, both powered by a 2,487cc 16-valve DOHC inline-4 gasoline engine coupled to a hybrid system. In adding another model to Toyota's local hybrid lineup, Sherwin Chua Lim, Toyota Motor Philippines' first vice president for vehicle sales operations, says Filipinos are ready for energy-efficient mobility options with less emissions, and hybrids offer choices that are practical and ready to use in our existing infrastructure and road conditions. The new Toyota RAV4 Hybrid is available in a wide range of colors, each for the LTD and XLE variants, with prices starting at 2.157 million pesos. DHL Express Philippines has acquired three BYD T3 electric vehicles for its logistics fleet. Called the Pure Electric Logistics Van, the BYD electric vans have a range of 250 kilometers on a full charge and can load up to 3.5 cubic meters of cargo. Nigel Lockett, DHL Express Philippines Country Manager, says the purchase of BYD electric vans is a first step towards greener logistics which will benefit the environment, customers, and the general public. This is part of Dutch Post DHL Group's global target of running 60% of its vehicles electrically by 2030 and to reduce logistic-related emissions to zero by 2050. BYD vehicles are distributed in the Philippines by Solar Transport Corporation. A 
Your Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. The entry of more pickup models and brands into the local market has made the segment all the more competitive. Up next on Showcase, we take a look at one of the mainstays vying for market segment leadership. The Teola Hilux is a top-of-the-line variant, the Conquest 2.8 4x4 automatic. Toyota Motor Philippines rolled out the 2020 update of the Hilux in the final months of the year as authorities continued to ease community quarantine restrictions. It arrived with a look that accentuated Toyota's reputation for quality, durability, and reliability. Neither garish nor loud, but rugged in a handsome kind of way. Headlighting the mate over Hilux is the Conquest 2.8 4x4 automatic. At 5,325mm long, 1,900mm wide, and 1,845mm tall with the roof ornament. The Hilux Conquest makes an impressive presence in both urban and rural setting. The thick frame and solid horizontal slats of the large grille, wide over fenders with garnish, and the 18-inch gloss black alloy wheels wrapped by 26560 R18 tires all add to the ruggedly handsome vibe. The Conquest 2.8 4x4 automatic also gets all of the exterior upgrades from the bi-beam LED auto-leveling headlamps, daytime running lights, front fog lamps, rear LED combination lamps with line guide and LED deck lamp to the power adjusting and folding side view mirrors, and intermittent windshield wipers with time adjust. It also comes with bed liner, sports bar, roof ornament, and the unobtrusive Conquest decals on the side. The Conquest 2.8 4x4 automatic also gets all the interior upgrades for comfort and convenience. These include smart entry and push start system, power window auto up and down function and jam protection, speed sending door locks, cruise control and automatic climate control. The driver's seat gets 6-way manual adjust function, the front passenger seat adjusts 4 ways, the rear seat separates 60-40 which allows flexibility for cargo. The multi-information display features easy-to-read dials plus a 4.2-inch TFT to provide all information needed by the driver. The Conquest cabin features leather door trims, interior illumination, and a leather-wrapped steering with controls and switches for audio, phone, and the MID. These include controls for the infotainment system that features an 8-inch display audio with AM-FM radio, Bluetooth, smart device link, Miracast, compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and playing through six speakers. There are more than enough cup holders and bottle holders for all occupants as well. Two 12-volt accessory outlets. Pickup trucks are no longer unwieldy or difficult to drive as before. This is true with the Conquest 2.8 4x4 automatic. Power steering with variable flow control, a 6-speed automatic transmission makes driving a breeze. What also makes the Conquest 2.8 4x4 automatic fun to drive is the 2,755cc 4-cylinder intercooled and turbocharged diesel engine made into the 6-speed automatic transmission that generates 204 PS at 3,400 revolutions per minute and 500 Nm of torque at 1,600 to 2,800 RPM. The adequate powertrain plus the 4-wheel drive capability make the Conquest a fun and practical pickup to own and drive around. The suspension system uses double wishbones in front and leaf spring rigid axle in the rear to allow for solid but comfortable ride and handling in the safe carriage of heavy loads. The brake system uses front ventilated and rear drums and is complemented by anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution for added safety. Also helping keeping driver and passengers safe are driver assist technologies that include vehicle stability control, hill start assist control, and downhill assist control. Rear cameras and sonars at all corners of the Conquest make parking such a huge vehicle easier. Adding to safety in the Hilux Conquest 2.8 4x4 automatic are dual airbags, ISOFIX teether anchors, 3-point ELR seatbelts for 5, with driver and front passenger getting pre-tensioners and force limiters. Finally, also standard in the Hilux is the Toyota Vehicle Security System, which comes with alarm and immobilizer. The Toyota Hilux has been around for decades now, leading pickup sales locally for majority of those years. 
with more competitors in the market told us to do more to stay ahead of the competition. That's our featured vehicle on this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program. 100% worry-free driving. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Asahan kailangan na matibay Pang matagalan kasama mo sa pag-unlad ng negosyo Modernong disenyo kaya-kaya ang cargo mo Nang tatak na ito Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up on yung negosyo Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up with Isuzu Trap is have our segment that dwells on the wide array of motoring problems not only in the metro but all over the country as well. This is where we present problems referred to us or we ourselves see and hope to fully find solutions for. Our public service segment is next. The EDSA busway has been operational since July 1 of the pandemic year 2020 and ever since there were issues the transport authorities and concessioners have faced. Now in the new normal, one of our followers, Mr. Floyd Drama, voiced that there are already pits on the dedicated bus lane on EDSA. Just recently, we took the EDSA carousel bus, albeit from Paranaque to Mandaluyong only. While my companions and I were not able to verify the claim, Others may have experienced and felt the bumps on different areas. Nevertheless, this is something that concerned agencies should work on. We shall ask the authorities for their reaction and actions to be taken. That's our public service segment this week. And should you yourself encounter motoring problems that need immediate attention, please feel free to contact us. See the details being flashed on your screen. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 35th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring. Uh, uh, uh.